Okay, so just before we get going, I want to point out that paraphrasing is when you put something in your own words. If you paraphrase something before you analyze it, it helps a lot because as you're paraphrasing and putting it in your own words, you might find words you don't understand and you'll look them up. And so your comprehension of what you're reading will go up and you can't really analyze something and find the deeper meaning if you don't understand what it means at all. So paraphrasing really helps with comprehension. And it's also important to remember that it's not the same as summarizing. When you summarize, you make it shorter and only keep the main most important idea when you paraphrase you keep all the ideas and sometimes the paraphrase is even longer than the original so let's look at this example the original text says Willy Wonka was famous for his delicious candy children and adults loved to eat it and here's the paraphrase Willy Wonka was known throughout the world so you see famous is kind of orange over here and known throughout the world means the same thing as famous but it's just put in this person's own words because people, children and adults, people, right? That means the same thing. Enjoyed eating, love to eat it. The tasty, tasty is subbing in for delicious here. So this person has processed this original text through his or her brain and written it out in his or her own words and now they really understand it because they stopped and thought about it. So that's the difference between paraphrasing and summarizing. And what we're going to be doing is paraphrasing. Okay, so we read the poem already and now we're going back and we're going, the idea is that you paraphrase the poem and put it in your own words so that you know you really understand it before you go ahead and analyze it. So this is the first sentence in the poem, and I divided it into sentences. The poem is kind of wiggly all over the page, and I thought a good way to separate it out and make my chunks for paraphrasing would be to look at the punctuation, because those are where the author stopped, so that's where I decided to stop too. So I always look at punctuation in a sentence, because it helps me figure out where the ideas start and stop. So this is the first sentence. It says, the first time I walked with a girl, I was 12, cold, and weighted down with two oranges in my jacket. So if I'm going to put this in my own words, um, it's going to say, when I was 12, I went on a walk with a girl for the first time. It was cold outside, and I had two oranges in my jacket. So I didn't do any analysis or read anything into it. I just took what the author had and put it in a more simple uh, sentence format that makes sense to me. Your paraphrase might be a little different from mine and that's okay because it's what makes sense to you. And so what makes sense to you might be a little bit different than what makes sense to the kid sitting next to you. So if it's not exactly the same as mine, that's okay. Okay, the next sentence, well, the next sentence is actually December period, which we know isn't a complete sentence because it, it doesn't have a subject and a verb. It's actually a fragment, but it's the word December and I stuck it in there. And then I put the next sentence in too. So December, frost cracking beneath my steps, my breath before me, then gone, as I walked toward her house, the one whose porch light burned yellow night and day in any weather. So in my own words, I made it sound like this. Since it was December, there was a lot of frost on the ground. I could see, my, oh, I put, I typed it wrong. That's okay. Sometimes teachers make mistakes. I could see my breath puffing in and out on my way to her house. The yellow porch light was on all the time. Okay, the next sentence says, a dog barked at me until she came out pulling at her gloves, face bright with rouge. Now remember, rouge is one of the words we looked up in the dictionary, and it was a kind of makeup um, that women wear to make their cheeks red, like blush, we would call it nowadays. While I waited for her to come out, a dog barked at me. When she came outside, she was putting on her gloves and her face had a rosy glow. So that rosy glow is how I said the blush part. All right, the poet then says, I smiled, touched her shoulder, and led her down the street, across a used car lot in a line of newly planted trees until we were breathing before a drugstore. So that beginning piece, I found it really difficult to make it simpler than it already is. That's the thing. This is not a poem where the poet's getting real crazy with a lot of uh, it, like really wild vocabulary or sentence structure or anything. So some of his words are so simple that I just kept it the same. So I smiled, touched her shoulder. That's the same as in his sentence, but I, then I changed the rest of it a little bit. And I walked a little in front as we went to the drugstore. We walked by a car lot and baby trees on the way. We entered, the tiny bell bringing a sales lady down a narrow aisle of goods. 
So for this one, I said, we went inside and the lady who worked there came out of an aisle to help us. Okay, the next line says, I turned to the candies, tiered like bleachers. And remember, tiered was one of our vocab words, so hopefully you looked it up in the dictionary. Um, I turned to the candies, tiered like bleachers, and asked what she wanted. Light in her eyes, a smile starting at the corners of her mouth. So for me, I said, she got really excited when I asked her if she wanted some candy. I fingered a nickel in my pocket, and when she lifted a chocolate that cost a dime, I didn't say anything. I didn't tell her I only had a nickel, even though she chose a candy that cost a dime. I took the nickel from my pocket, then an orange, and set them quietly on the counter. So I put the nickel and the orange on the counter to pay for the candy. When I looked up, the lady's eyes met mine and held them, knowing very well what it was all about. The store clerk and I made eye contact, and she knew what I was trying to do with the nickel and the orange. Oh, snap. Outside, a few cars hissing past, fog hanging like old coats between the trees. And so I said, cars were going by outside, and there was a low hanging fog. And I put a picture there just in case. I don't know if you all pay too much attention to the weather. Um, old people like to pay attention to the weather. I'm not sure if young people do, but that's what a low hanging fog would look like. <laughs> I took my girl's hand in mine for two blocks, then released it to let her unwrap the chocolate. We held hands for two blocks, but I let go so she could eat her candy. I peeled my orange that was so bright against the gray of December that from some distance, someone might have thought I was making a fire in my hands. So I said, my orange looked really bright when compared to the gray surroundings. Somebody really far away may have thought I was holding fire. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we spent some time together going through the poem Oranges by Gary Soto, and I showed you the choices that I made as I was paraphrasing it and putting it into my own words. So you can see on my name and explain chart what it would look like. I put my paraphrase in the left-hand column. Now, this is a really long poem, and it has pretty simple words, so it didn't end up being too different from the original poem. Some poems that you read are like that. They're already pretty simple, and they're kind of easy to get, and you, you already know what's going on. So paraphrasing with that kind of poem isn't a super big deal, but sometimes you get a poem, and you read it, and you think, what the heck is this person talking about? I don't get it at all. Those poems are the ones where you really want to get detailed with your paraphrase and take a lot of time to jot down and look up all the words in the dictionary and that kind of thing. This one, you know, we went through and we did it, and but I think we probably had a pretty good idea of what was going on in the poem even before we did the paraphrase. So I just wanted to, to kind of go through that process with you. Um, and your paraphrase might be a little different than mine, and that is okay as long as you get the basic idea. So now we're going to move on.